So I'm here in East Honolulu on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Uh, this is where I grew up and I'm here at my parents' house and I just wanted to make a quick video showing uh, this project that we've been working on here for a little bit over four years now. Um, and this whole area that you're looking at here was a sea of guinea grass, which is this tall uh, non-native invasive grass and then some of these other trees you know and these are all non-native uh, the original native dryland forest habitat is completely gone in this whole area there would have been a incredible super diverse you know highly endemic native dry forest ecosystem uh, with plant species and animals, uh, you know, organisms that are found nowhere else in the world. Um, and unfortunately, almost all of that is lost. I believe it's something like only 1% of the Hawaiian tropical dry forest ecosystem remains. Um, but what we started doing four years ago is clearing out some of that non-native vegetation and replacing it with native plants and and other plants, not necessarily just native, um, but really just trying to increase the diversity, increase the overall capacity for life, um, start to rebuild the soil. So I'm gonna show you what things looked like before here. If we make our way to the fence line, which I, I installed this fence to prevent pigs. You know, we got feral pigs here. They like to come down here every once in a while and rummage around, you know, dig through my plants and we can't have that. So I had to put up a fence, which will hopefully deter the pigs. Um, but anyway, you can kind of see that most of the efforts are being focused on the inside of this exclosure. Um, and then outside the exclosure, you can kind of get a sense of what things looked like before we started four years ago. Just this, you know, sea of guinea grass, like I said, with some non-native trees here and there. But th this is bedrock right here. This is the Ko'olau basalt formation. Um, you know, and that's part of the original shield volcano, the Ko'olau shield volcano. And it has since eroded into these massive valleys. Um, but you can kind of see this bedrock remaining here, this basalt. Uh, and then very thin soils start, you know, I mean, there's thin, thin soils up here, but right about here at the fence line, you, you know, it starts to get a little bit thicker. Um, the soils start to, um, you know, as we bottom out in this valley, you start to get thicker soil horizons. Um, but it's this really degraded soil. I believe it's a vertisol. Um, it's, it's a volcanic, you know, volcanic derived from this basalt. Um, but here's kind of a sense here of what we're dealing with. You know, this sort of rocky, kind of poor, uh, low in organic matter. Um, and there's basically no different horizons. Um, you know, we would have had probably feet of rich organic soil layers on top and we've um, eroded down and we're continuing to erode into this just dust um, which you know when we get really heavy rains in the winter this just you know water just sheets off and you get tons of erosion and then in the summer you know it doesn't hold on to any of that moisture and it just dries out into this dust so you know, besides the total collapse of the ecology, we've also had a collapse of the, of the hydrologic cycle, um, you know. So this process is continuing. Um, we're losing more and more soil, which washes out onto the reefs, smothers the reefs. Um, it's really bad for everything. So what, what we're trying to do here at this site is kind of demonstrate the whole idea of reversing this process 
you know, and showing that we can do it and that it doesn't take hundreds or thousands of years to, to you know, start to develop soils and to bring back a more diverse ecology. So yeah, essentially, um, you know, what we're doing here is trying to encourage as many native plants as possible. Um, some of these are incredibly rare and endangered plants. Um, and, you know, fortunately they're available through native plant nurseries um, in the state now. Um, you can get them at like Home Depot or, you know, City Mill, uh, which is like a hardware store. Um, you know, it's a pretty exciting time. Um, and I think we're starting to see a lot more people you know, figure this stuff out and, you know, myself included and sort of realize the importance of this um, and start to learn these plants, you know, the, these plants that have been absent. You know, I, I grew up here, my, you know, spent my whole life having no idea that, you know, what kind of native plants were here before. But so, yeah, as you can see, um, you know, we've started clearing out a lot of this guinea grass and making space for new plants, um, you know, planting a lot of these really rare native plants um, and just starting to really increase the amount of diversity. Um, and this has been a huge learning process for me. We're starting to get a little bit better at understanding the, the best techniques, you know, the best practices. Um, and really what, what I've found, what it's all about is building soil and creating this mulch layer, this diverse leaf litter, um, and then of course just lots of plants which create shade and habitat for all kinds of different things. You know, there's a whole ecology here, a, no a novel ecosystem forming. Um, uh, it's really exciting to look at. I've been, you know, every insect that I see, every little animal, um, I take, take photos of them and I post them on iNaturalist to, you know, identify them and kind of keep a record of those uh, observations and those, you know, occurrences for myself, but for others as well, you know, moving forward into the future, we'll be able to kind of have this record of, you know, what species were here. And also just sort of how this ecological succession is taking place in this, you know, with our disturbances and our management and everything. Um, so it's pretty exciting. And I just wanted to share you know, sort of some of the things that are going on here because things are starting to accelerate. Um, you can see after four years of doing this kind of work, things are starting to look really good. It's getting pretty exciting. Um, a lot of these native plants are actually flowering. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll start to get some more seeds. And um, look, here's one called Iliae. It's a plumbago and it's flowering. Um, Lumbago zelenica, I think that's indigenous, might be endemic, I, I forget, but I don't know, we have such a high rate of endemism that, you know, the, the indigenous species are actually the oddballs, and you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, this one's indigenous, because like most of the native plants here, like this one, uh, which isn't looking too good here, this is an endemic, um, nototrichium, it's actually in the amaranth family, uh, you know, it's got these really cool silver, green leaves and uh, here's kind of a better example of the leaves so uh you know it's not looking too good i think uh the summer was pretty brutal for it hopefully it hangs on um and i'm gonna give it a little bit more mulch you can see that there you know i've started to started to develop this like thin layer of organic soil which will help retain more moisture um, hopefully these plants will grow a little better. Um, but yeah, I'm going to add some more to that, <laughs> just more mulch. Um, and the way that I do that, you know, there's plenty of mulch around. We've got these non-native tababuya trees right here. Um, and I'm experimenting with uh, a technique called pollarding, which is where you basically chop them at about head height and they re-sprout every or I mean, you know, they, they start to re-sprout. So, um, but yeah, you chop that material and you drop it as mulch. Um, you know, these trees are actually drought deciduous. So in the summer, they'll drop all their leaves anyway, which provides, you know, tons of mulch and, you know, leafy material um, for insulating, uh, you know, for creating soil. Um, 
but sort of the idea with this is to just start to accelerate the process of soil building. Um, and you can see, I, I think I chopped these last year, so one year ago. This is one year of regrowth on these tababuyas, um, also known as pink trumpet trees. Uh, here's the flower. Um, you know, these are invasive. You know, they're, they're spreading. The, they're planted all around the as ornamentals. The neighbors have like a pretty big one right there, which is probably what, um, you know, their seeds kind of, they, they were like wind dispersed seeds. They probably made their way over here. And that's why we have this little grove of tababuyas. Um, you know, and I cut a few of them down um, just to create a little bit more space. But right now I'm really trying to work with them and, you know, make them uh, a part of this system for now. Um, um, you know, there's a bird nest up in there. So the trees are good. It's better to have some trees than no trees, <laughs> even if they're non-native and invasive like these. Um, but these are actually really interesting to me. Um, you know, they're used in like forestry and everything. Uh, they're fast growing, you know, hardy pioneers. Um, um, you know, I'm just sort of excited about learning more about them to hopefully use them to our advantage. Um, so the other thing, as you can see, is there's this really cool rock wall structure here, which we constructed, I think, last year. Um, and, you know, that's to slow uh, water that's sheeting off the hillside during heavy rain events and, you know, reduce erosion, start to accumulate organic materials inside this kind of flatter plateau, this little terrace here. Um, so hopefully that's, you know, works, you know, hopefully that works out like sort of in the long run. It's sort of a passive thing. You know, it's a lot of work at first, quite a large disturbance, but then you can just sort of walk away from it and, um, it'll start to accumulate more and more organic material and mulch and soil. And, you know, like I said, it slows down water. So you start to get more, uh, infiltration of water, um, and you can store water in the ground and hopefully that'll sustain plants a little better through the hot summer. Um, so we got a couple of those types of structures, not just made of rocks, but you know, we have just logs laying on contour that, uh, they work in basically the same way. So you'll see like, you know, I've just got these rows of all the sticks, logs, branches, um, you know, some rocks and leaves and everything. And they are slowing down and uh, they're slowing down erosion. You know, you can see all this soil starting to accumulate on the uphill side. Um, and then we planted all these plants, so. Things are starting to accelerate quite a bit. Um, you know, I wasn't here for the whole last year and, you know, basically nothing, no, there was no work being done here. Um, you know, my dad will come up occasionally and stand over here, drink a beer and, you know, hose, <laughs> he'll, he'll attempt to water things. Um, but I've been trying to tell him like, it's not really necessary and may even, it might even be um, making things worse you know, if you just give things a quick squirt with the hose every once in a while, um, you know, they, they might develop shallow roots um, and they might sort of uh, become dependent on that water. Um, and really the goal is to just use the resources that are available, um, you know, but it's good to water things to help get them established. So, um, but my point was like, you know, nobody was up here doing any work um, for the last year and things just continued on things were working passively like I was saying like these structures were you know retaining any leaves or branches um, and any rainfall heavy rainfall that may have occurred um, and then plants were just doing their thing and growing um, all right I'll make some more videos, hopefully a little bit more focused, a little shorter, but I thought it'd be good to just get like, you know, a nice detailed long video.
uh, really introducing this site to the YouTube channel, um, you know, and pretty soon I'll be heading over to the Big Island uh, to look at some of the projects that I was working on there while I lived there for a few years. Um, and I just go, you know, see some of my friends that live there and, you know, revisit um, some of the old garden projects and situations and kind of learn from, you know, their evolution and see how those sites are evolving and uh, what management worked and what didn't work and sort of what designs worked, you know. So it, it's going to be good to go revisit those sites. They're, you know, probably really starting to get, they're really starting to develop into mature food forests. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go to my friend's place. He, he's he got, I think it's like a six acre or something like that, like five or six acre food forest um, in Honoka'a, which I... Um, I'm really interested in and um, particularly the uh, native plants that I gifted him uh, when I moved away. I basically uh, drove over there several times with several truckloads of plants <laughs> and just said, here you go, please look after them. And he was stoked. <laughs> so I wanna go check those out and you know see how he's doing and see how his food forest is doing and everything. Um, and then I got a couple other projects I want to look at and see some friends over there. So I'll make some videos of that. Um, and then I'll be heading back over towards the East Coast, stopping over in California, uh, see my grandpa, and then I'll be back in upstate New York um, where I will check in on the Goat Rock Forest Garden and some of the other projects that we've got going on over there um, and prepare for spring in the Adirondacks so yeah Adirondacks right now freezing cold not a lot of sunshine short days uh, so it's nice to be able to escape that every once in a while and come here to East Honolulu and go jump in the ocean and get a little bit of sun and check all my plants so anyway Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got something out of this. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or questions or suggestions of any kind. Uh, anything that I might have missed or anything that I might have, I don't know, any mistakes that I made or whatever. So, and then if you want to keep up to date and you know, keep track of this stuff, then you should subscribe. Join me on this journey as I document the sort of restoration of this highly degraded habitat here at Mauna Ohi Ridge. So anyway, hope you hope you got something out of this. Hope you enjoyed, uh, and I'll uh, hope to hopefully I can make some videos sometime soon. All right, aloha.